So quite a few years ago, I got this um, Beckman Industrial Model 9020 um, oscilloscope. Um, it's a nice little cheap oscilloscope, simple controls, 20 megahertz, nothing really special. One thing I like about it is it has a octopus tester um, built into it for just quick, quick tests if you want to do that. But um, when I originally bought it, the uh, complaint was that channel 1 didn't work. And this was probably seven or eight years ago. And I did a little bit of messing around with it at that time. And I noticed the BNC jacks were in really poor condition. The center um, contact was spread wide open and they were really corroded. So I went in there with a little punch and closed that up some and ever since the input channel one input has worked just fine and a few weeks ago um, the controls on this thing was incredibly noisy every every single button that you turn you had to cycle it five or six times in order to get it to uh, to get a stable trace so I decided a few weeks ago when I was on vacation to pretty much completely disassemble this and clean all the controls and while I was in there I ran an ESR tester through a lot of capacitors and most of them were pretty good but the really low value like the 5 or the 10 microfarad ones were pretty high 10, 15, 20 ohms so I changed out a few capacitors um, this is also the one that in an earlier video here a couple weeks ago that I was messing around with a small relay and replaced that. Got it all back together and everything worked really well. Um, all the controls are nice and quiet, except channel 1 didn't work again all of a sudden. I'm like, what the heck is up with that? So I did a little bit of testing and I was actually going to pull the whole um, input of input attenuator card completely back out and I was three quarters of the way through that and have all the cables disconnected and the whole works and then I realized well maybe I would do a little bit of playing around here and here's what I found um, uh, let me I'll try to set this scope up a little bit differently to show you what I found um, and I have to wonder if this wasn't the original problem when I bought this um, let me set things up a little bit differently and I'll be back to show you. So I've got my scope connected between ground and the output of the um, channel 1 attenuator going into the uh, V board. And if you look right now, it's 220.8 kilo ohms to ground, which is normal. I used channel 2 as a reference since it was working perfectly. Now, watch what happens when I move this around. See that? That goes right to ground. Now, um, originally when I was doing the troubleshooting on this the other day, I discovered that this particular point was um, actually grounded. And after I had disconnected all the cables and removed all the screws for that board, I decided just to do another check on there and all of a sudden that ground had gone away and obviously the V board had moved around a little bit and I'm thinking well what's going on here and I started moving it around and sure enough I would get that zero ohms again so I've been trying to kind of move things around there's the apparently the output of that is grounding to the uh, shield that goes around the attenuator somehow um, I'm hoping to figure out for certain where it is rather than taking this attenuator board back out because it's a pain in the rear end I'm going to have to pull half this oscilloscope out apart to get it out but I do know that I've seen on the net a couple people asking questions about um, their channel 1 or channel 2 input not working on these scopes and that might be something to look into and let me dig around here a little bit more and see if I can't find out why this is happening or where exactly it is happening 
Okay, I'm back. Um, I got my high power flashlight out and did a lot of looking around and I think I might know exactly what the problem was and I might have solved that problem. Um, if you notice now when I pull that, push that pretty hard, it doesn't ground out and even when I grab the attenuator itself, oh, even, even doing that will still do it a little bit. I have to pull a lot farther than what I did. So there's a there's a flap in there that runs underneath this V board and it's really close to where the contact is from the output of the um, channel one attenuator to the V board and I bent that over a little bit and actually I might be good enough now I don't know if it's I'm pushing pretty hard to actually get that to ground out now but I'm gonna try and move that a little bit but I'll uh, I'll, I'll get in there with a screwdriver and bend that out a little bit more and see if we can't get that farther away. Because right now, I'm, I mean, I'm moving that like way, way beyond any more that's going to move with like flex the oscilloscope or anything like that. But I'd like to get a little bit farther away. And then once I'm done with that, I'll uh, pull the uh, camera off the tripod and I'll see if I can't try and show you where exactly the problem was with this. Okay, there is where that uh, connection is right there. And way back in there, get my little screwdriver, right there, if you can see it, there's a little metal flap there that runs underneath here and it was contacting this right there. It's, it's pretty close. So I bent that out some to prevent that from happening. So now, I'll connect that back up. I'm pretty good to go. And I have to move this way over like that in order for that to contact, which is way farther than that's ever going to bend without me putting a lot of pressure on it. I'll bend this right about there is where it touches. That's a long ways. There's no way that thing's ever going to bend that far completely assembled. So I'm going to uh, put this thing back together and unfortunately I wish I had discovered this before I disconnect all these doggone cables. They snake all over the place underneath the scope and everywhere else. So they're going to be difficult to get back together. So it'll be a little while. I'll put this back together and put a signal to it and we'll test it out. So all the cables are connected and also I've got this center support bolted back on. So everything is basically where it's going to be when the oscilloscope is together. And as you can see, I can move that around slightly and not have it ground out and same way with this if I just move it slightly more than it will ever move in practice that channel does not ground out anymore so I'm gonna I'm gonna first power the thing up before I put the cover on I won't do that on camera to make sure that I have everything connected then I'll put the cover and everything on and have it completely back together and we'll test it out and see if it works now. Well this oscilloscope's all back together now. Um, let's try it out. I've got it hooked up to my uh, Heathkit audio generator at about 1 kilohertz and 300 millivolts RMS I think it is. Let's flip it on and it works. So that's good. And what's really nice is these controls are really quiet now. There's no jumping around and whatever. So that's that's a definite plus. Go over to channel two. It's the same way, nice and quiet. Before I cleaned these controls, every time I turned that, everything would just go nuts until I spun around three or four times. So, it's definitely working. Now my next uh, 
project. This this 9020 has that component test on it. And then also there was a, a companion piece that you could buy. Um, it was one of these scope mate 2 uh, IC and component tester. I've had one of these for almost as long as I've had this oscilloscope. And it's finally time to uh, <coughs> disassemble it, redo it, clean it up, and I'll have kind of a nice little test set here. I think this Beckman, I'm going to use it. It's This is going to be like my one for doing like octopus tester stuff, and then also I've got a uh, Ico curve tracer. I'll have it set up to where it works on this as well. This will be my scope for doing that sort of work. And it was a uh, back whenever these first came out in ninety or eighty six, I think it was. There were several articles on them in the different uh, electronics magazines. And here's one right here from. Uh, May of 1986 it was in elect electronic servicing and technology and you can go on the uh, world radio history site and download that There's a pretty nice article in this for using the uh, scope mate 2 with that oscilloscope so once I get get that thing all uh, rebuilt and I was missing <clears throat> when I got it it didn't come with a uh, wall transformer it runs off of a 15 or a 14 volt AC wall transformer I just ordered one of those from Jameco and there's a couple of the uh, um, quick connect um, IC sockets that were missing I think I have a couple of those laying around somewhere and I'll just uh, disassemble that thing probably put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and make it so it's functional and usable and I'll have a nice little test set here whenever I need to do that kind of work so I'll probably do a video on that scope mate too at some point once I start on that